Hello City of Punta Gorda, my name is Fabiana Solano, planner for the Urban Design Division. In the last video, city staff and the consultants summarized updates being made to the city's comprehensive plan and land development rights, specifically the addition of form-based codes. In this video, we will be summarizing the code workshops and the results from the surveys. The code frame workshops were designed to involve the community of Punta Gorda in establishing the building blocks of the new form base code, or FBC. The first code framework workshop was held on Tuesday, March 23, 2021. In the first part of this two meeting workshop, Dover Cole and Partners gave a brief overview of what land development regulations and form based codes are and provided details regarding the challenges and issues with Punta Gorda's existing zoning regulations. A Q&A session followed. After questions were answered, the planning team presented some initial elements for the future FBC framework for the community to consider. Participants were asked what building types they preferred and where they thought those were appropriate, as well as where the most and least intense building forms should be permitted. The second code framework workshop was held on Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. In the second part of the two meeting workshops, Dover Cole and Partners summarized the community input from part one, as well as input received during the technical meetings. They also provided more details about the shortcomings of Punta Gorda's existing land development regulations, illustrated how specific provisions in a form-based code can help the community achieve more predictable and high quality development, and answered questions from participants. If you would like to watch both recordings of the workshops, we've provided the links to them in the description down below. Now I will give it off to Louisa, who will share the results from the code workshop surveys. Hello, my name is Louisa and I'm a project manager and town planner at Dover Cole Partners, working with the city on the new form based code. During the code workshops this spring, two surveys were circulated to help us understand what kind of development and redevelopment the community desires in Punta Gorda. This first survey asked participants to consider a variety of different building types and where each type is appropriate within the new form-based code area. Let's take a look at the results. This map divides the form-based code area into seven sub-areas for respondents to consider for each building type. Area A covers downtown Punta Gorda. B encompasses East Downtown and the Medical District. C, the Greater Fisherman's Village area. D, the Commercial Corridor along US 41. E, the Historic Residential Neighborhood west of US 41. F, the Historic Residential Neighborhood east of US 41. And G, the remaining traditional residential areas. Now, let's see how people responded, starting off with some mixed-use building types. The live work building type is a small attached or detached building with commercial or office on the ground floor and a single residence above. Mixed use buildings are larger buildings that combine two or more uses with some kind of commercial use usually reserved for the ground floor. Two different sizes of mixed use buildings were defined for this survey, small and medium. The small mixed use building could be two to four stories tall and fit on one two or even three typical lots. The medium sized mixed use building could be four stories or taller and would have a larger overall footprint, occupying several typical lots, one larger lot, or even half of a city block. There was strong support, over 80%, for allowing live work and both small and medium sized mixed use buildings in downtown. Over 55% of respondents also marked these as appropriate in the East Downtown Medical District area. There was a similar level of support for these three building types along the US 41 Commercial Corridor. In the Greater Fisherman's Village area, there was a fair level of support, 49%, for live-work buildings, but less so for small and medium-sized mixed-use buildings. Few respondents marked any of these building types as appropriate in the residential areas E, F, and G though 14% did think that live work could fit into the historic residential neighborhood east of US 41. Traditional Main Street buildings are the one and two story attached buildings that line main streets in small towns across the country. These typically have small retail and service uses on the ground floor and either offices, 
residences, or other commercial uses on the second floor. Row houses, on the other hand, are single-family attached residential buildings. These types of homes typically have car access from a rear lane or alley, are two to three stories tall, and are placed closer to the sidewalk than other single-family residential types. Nearly all respondents favored traditional Main Street buildings in downtown, whereas about half supported row houses there. Half of respondents also supported traditional Main Street buildings and row houses in the East Downtown Medical District. The only other areas with a fair level of support, around 40%, for Main Street buildings were Fisherman's Village and the US 41 Commercial Corridor. For row houses, close to 40% of respondents thought them appropriate in Fisherman's Village and the historic residential neighborhood east of US 41. For the remaining residential areas, anywhere between 22 and 28 percent of respondents supported row houses. The remaining building types explored are purely residential. The multifamily types included triplex and fourplexes, which are three and four unit homes, multiplexes, which are typically five to 12 unit homes, and courtyard apartment buildings, which are usually two to four story apartment buildings organized around a courtyard or garden. Duplex buildings were not considered as these are already permitted in the city's current land belt regulations for these areas. The areas with the greatest level of support for triplex and fourplex buildings were the historic neighborhood east of US 41, 52%, the East Downtown Medical District, 40%, and the traditional residential areas, 37%. For all remaining areas, 21 to 33% of respondents felt that the triplex and fourplexes are appropriate. For multiplex buildings, the areas with the greatest support were the East Downtown Medical District, 61%, Downtown with 47%, and the US 41 Commercial Corridor with 41%. There was very little support, only 7%, for multiplexes in the historic residential neighborhood west of US 41. For all remaining areas, 19 to 30% of respondents marked multiplexes as appropriate. There was fair support for courtyard apartments in East Downtown Medical District, 54%, and in the historic neighborhood east of US 41, 51%. Between 30 and 38% of respondents also selected courtyard apartments as appropriate in downtown, Fisherman's Village, the historic residential neighborhood west of US 41, and the remaining traditional residential areas. The last building types included in the survey are all single family detached homes. Estate houses are larger homes sitting on half acre to acre sized lots. Compact houses, on the other hand, are small homes sitting on compact lots, which could be anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 square feet. Cottage courts are multi-home developments that typically feature anywhere from four to 12 small cottages or bungalows around a common green space. Estate houses were the least popular building type from the survey. 35% of respondents marked that this type was not appropriate anywhere. Though there was support for them in the traditional residential areas with 52% and in the historic residential neighborhood west of US 41 with 30%. Compact houses, on the other hand, had very strong support, 61 to 85% across all of the residential areas, as well as fair support, 47%, in the East Downtown Medical District area. Less than 25% of the respondents, however, felt that this building type was appropriate in downtown, Fisherman's Village, or the US 41 commercial corridor. Finally, there was strong support for cottage courts in the historic residential neighborhood east of US 41, with 77%, as well as a fair amount of support for them in the historic residential neighborhood west of US 41, with 58%, the traditional residential areas 51%, and in the East Downtown Medical District with 45%. The second code workshop survey focused on development intensity. Respondents were asked to consider what level of intensity is appropriate along specific streets in the form-based code area. Development intensity considers a number of things, including the overall height and footprint of a particular building, 
but also the number of residential units and their variety of uses allowed. To help people visualize different levels of intensity, we showed this hierarchy of existing local development examples from the lowest level of intensity, which includes buildings of a similar size and scale to detached homes, to the highest level of intensity, which includes buildings of a similar size and scale to the Wyvern Hotel in downtown Punta Gorda. A draft development intensity map was created and shared for people's consideration. When asked whether they agreed with the streets identified in red to accommodate the highest level of intensity, 80% of respondents said they agreed or strongly agreed. When asked whether they agreed with the streets identified in orange to accommodate a medium intensity of development, 84% of respondents said they agreed or strongly agreed. Next, when asked about the streets identified in yellow to accommodate a lower intensity of development, 77% of respondents either agreed or strongly agreed. Finally, when asked about the remaining unmarked streets to accommodate the lowest intensity of development, 81% of respondents agreed. Overall, there was strong support for the draft development intensity map shown in the survey, though it's important to note that neither the building type nor the development intensity survey results will be regarded in isolation nor as a scientifically sound reflection of what the entire community wants. These surveys are merely a starting port for community discussion and one of the many considerations for staff and consultants to weigh when developing the basic framework for the new form-based code. That is all for this update. If you watched the last video, I asked you all, how tall do you think the Wyvern Hotel is, including stories and height? The answer to that trivia question was, five stories and a height of 61 feet. But before I go, let's play another trivia game. How tall do you think the Charlotte County Justice Center is, including stories and height? I will provide the answer in the next video, where we'll explain how to better understand the regulating plans. See you then.